In chemistry, there is a concept called a complex. As the name suggests, it's not something to do with complexity, but is in fact something which is a inter something with many interconnected parts. So this applies a lot when we're doing transition metal chemistry. But what is a complex? Well, there is a metal ion surrounded by things we call ligands, which are just things bonded to it in a slightly special way. So these are ligands. The name doesn't particularly come from anything, it's just what somebody called it once and it stuck. So these ligands, the special thing about them is that the bonds going on here between the metal ion and the ligand isn't just a normal covalent bond, but it's a coordinate bond because both of the electrons come from the ligand. So ligands have these lone pairs on them that, which they can use in the bonding between the metal ion. So examples of ligands, you can have a minus ion, so chlorine, it has a lone pair of electrons. Hydroxide ions, those have lone pairs. Cyanide ions have lone pairs, but they don't have to be these charged particles. We can have a uh, ammonia that has lone pairs. Water that has two lone pairs. So all of these can be ligands. But we're not just limited to these kind of simple molecules. We can have something like ethandioate. An ethandioate ion, which has been deprotonated to have these two lone pairs on each of these oxygens. But if these ligands donate a pair of electrons to form this bond, how many bonds can each of these form? Well, these can only form one bond, they only have these one pair of electrons. But but ox there, sorry, water and this ethandioate ion both have two pairs of electrons. But water can still only form one bond, because the oxygen can't form two bonds to this one atom. It's, it doesn't work that way. But there is nothing to stop this ethandioate ion for forming two bonds with one lig with one metal ion. So how do we separate these? Well, we have these names for them. Based on how many lone pairs it can donate to one metal ion, we can either call it a unidentate, and this name comes from, uh, I think it's Greek, which literally means one tooth, and they use tooth as in something that latches on, so this means that it can only form one coordinate bond. We can have bidentate, which again means two teeth. Well, it's still the same thing, but I don't know whether the context changed. I don't know Greek. And then we can have a multidentate, which is uh, more than two teeth. So this can form one coordinate bond. These bidentate ligands such as this ethandioate can form two coordinate bonds and then you can have very crazy things like uh we'll look later at something called edta4 minus that's a multi-dentate ligand which i think can form four coordinate bonds four no six coordinate bonds that can form um so that's how we separate these ligands but how do these ligands actually bond to the metal ion. Well, let's look at transition metals. So let's look at a complex like this. Now this basically means we have an ion, a iron ion with six H2O ligands bonded to it. And it has a three plus charge for reasons that we'll talk about later, but what happens here is we have the electron construction, the electron configuration of iron. So let's write that out. We have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d6, and 4s2. Remember, because the 4s orbital fills up before the 3d orbital, which means that although the 3d orbital is incomplete, the 4s1 is complete. But when it forms a 3 plus ion, 
we lose three electrons. So we lose one from the four, we lose two from the 4s level and one from the 3d level. So we get a new electron configuration, which is exactly the same. Oh, go away, Avira. Which is exactly the same up till here, where we have 3d5, and then it stops because our 4s level is empty. So if we draw out the boxes that represent this, so we'll just go from the 3d level, we have this uh, 3d, which has its five boxes, and then we have the 4s at a slightly lower level with its one box, 4s. So usually it has an electron configuration that looks like this, remember the pairing rule, and a fair thing here. So these electrons, two of them fill this uh, orbital, and then the rest of them spread out, and two of them are in the 4s orbital. But when it forms an ion, it looks, I'll just copy this to avoid me drawing it again. Like so, when it forms this ion, it loses these two electrons. Get a bigger brush size. Loses those two electrons, and it loses that electron. So the reason why I chose this case is because these 3D e electrons stay totally the same. These are not involved in bonding at all. These stay the same. But what happens is these lone pairs of electrons from the ligands come in and fill orbitals that are empty. But it can't just form orbitals with different energy levels of orbitals. What it has to do is take other four orbital, four level orbitals. So it takes the 4s, the 4p, and then two of the 4d orbitals and forms a new orbital. So it takes two of these, this one, and this one, and it kind of muddles them all up and scrambles them in a process that we call hybridization, but that's not really important. It takes them all and it forms a new energy level composed of those six boxes that we saw. So now we have six boxes. And that is where the, remember, these can each be filled with two electrons, and those two electrons all come from the lone pairs on H2O. So we fill these up, this up, this up, and so on, all with H2Os. And that is why it forms a complex with six H2O ligands. If we look back up at the formula for the, uh, the complex, we have six H2O ligands. Now, why does it do six? Why not four or 20? Well, if we think about it mathematically, if we have a spherical Fe3 plus atom, and we are bonding these large H2O ions to it, we can only form six around it. If we draw this in a three-dimensional structure with the bold things coming towards you and the dashes going away from you, that's how it actually looks. We can only fit six around, and we want to form the maximum number of possible bonds because the bonds mean the energy gets, the molecules vibrate less, and that means that we have more stability, more stability, and everything wants to be as stable as it can, so that's why it forms these six bonds. So then, why was the whole thing 3+. plus. Well, when we have our Fe, that forms a 3+, plus ion. It can form a number of multiple oxidation states. That's kind of one of the things about transition metals, but in this case it forms a 3+. Plus. And it goes on to bond with 6 H2Os. Now, H2Os 
don't have a charge. They are not a charged particle. Charged molecule, sorry. So when we have a complex formed out of these two elements, we are still left with a 3 plus charge. And that is the way that we work out all of the charges on uh, these complexes. We, we have to know the oxidation state of the original ion and then the charges of its ligands. So if it was bonded with not uh, six H2Os, but instead it was bonded to, let's say, four chlorines, so it was instead Cl4, it wouldn't be a 3 plus charge anymore because the Cl minus ions each had a minus charge and there are four of them now. So instead of a 3 plus, we have the 3 plus minus the four, the four from the minus charges of the chlorine to give a minus charge to the overall complex. There is another thing that you need to know. Along with the charge of the overall complex, there is something called a coordination number. So that is coordination number. Now, remember that we formed those coordinate bonds. Well, this is to do with that. The coordination number simply states how many ligands are attached to the, co the metal ion that have formed coordinate bonds. So, in the example that we just did with the iron, all of the H2Os formed coordinate bonds with the iron, so its coordination number was 6. And that was also how we knew how many things were bonded to it. So, uh, if we were just given Fe3+, plus, and we said it had a, it was bonded to H2Os with a coordination number of 6, we could work out that it would end up as Fe h 20 plus because the coordination number of 6 tells us that it forms 6 coordinate bonds, and we have these H2O ligands, so it's going to form 6 coordinate bonds with these H2O ligands, and it's going to have an overall charge of 3+. plus. But just because, in this case, the coordination number is the same as the number of overall things it has around it, that's not true in every case. That doesn't have to be true. The strict definition of coordination number is how many things have formed coordinate bonds with the metal ion. But you're never going to come across, well, I'm not going to say never, but you're very unlikely to come across something which, where this isn't the case, where it is the same coordination number. There's a number of things around it, but all that other stuff is for university problems, because those are really hard to figure out. So that is a brief overview of the ligands and the complexes. We'll go more in depth into it in other videos, but that was just a short introduction. See you later.